hope to those who have none. That's the mission of the International Medical Alliance based out of Rancho Mirage. For the second year in a row, we've gone with the group to Ecuador to help people who can't afford and don't have access to medical care. Tonight in Assignment Ecuador, we begin our five-part series on their work in the third world country. Welcome to Ibarra, Ecuador, a relatively small town in a valley of these giant Andean mountains. It's a town of hard workers, many of whom are farm workers. It's the way of life in this third world country. Grow what you eat. If there's extra, sell it. The average monthly income for people here, $30. It's through the charity of the International Medical Alliance that these people are able to get medical care. They would otherwise go without. They wait for hours, some days, for this group of American doctors and volunteers to arrive here at St. Vincent de Paul Hospital. And when we step off the bus, it's down to business. A short briefing by the local hospital staff and then right to work. Okay, we're going to go to room 18. Tons of boxes containing surgical supplies and medicine are unpacked by the volunteers. Surgery. Surgery. Meantime, the doctors begin to screen patients and decide who they're going to be able to see. Dr. Doriana Cosgrove, who works out of La Quinta, examines this woman. She had a stroke 20 years ago and has since lost function with the left side of her face. You can see how sunken in it's become. We need all her information. We want to make sure we have her phone number. Dr. Peter Shear, an oral and maxillofacial surgeon out of Rancho Mirage, also screens patients for surgery like this little boy. <laughs> Syndromic, it's a, a telocanthism, which is a widening of, of the base of the eyes. The boy was born with this deformity. Dr. Shears says he can't help him. Because he just had surgery in uh, this last year, uh, he needs to wait until he's about 12 years old. You can't do it sooner? No, because no. Uh, if we disturb his growth, uh, if you go and do surgery now, you disturb the rest of the growth centers and then the rest of the face won't grow properly. So I want her to, to try to wait as long as possible. It's bad news for this mother. Another surgery for her baby will not happen right now. She will have to wait until he is at least 10 years old in order for the rest of his face to develop correctly. Denali Valor from Palm Springs is a physician assistant. She was helping in pediatrics, one of our favorite places to hand out candy. Yes. We are screening the kids and we're seeing them and we're writing prescriptions and then the kids are going to the pharmacy with the prescriptions to pick up vitamins, antiparasitics and medications as needed. Are all these kids sick or they're just coming in for a checkup? Some of them are coming in for che checkups because the parents heard that we're going to be here so they want to get medications like vitamins for their kids but some of them are sick. Valor keeps busy. She has halls full of children to see. And that's where we found nine-year-old Tanya Rigolato Sanchez. She was seen by the IMA doctors in previous years for her facial deformity known as hemifacial microsomia. She was born without half of her jaw and inner ear canal. This year, IMA has brought Tanya back to Palm Springs to perform surgeries that will finally correct her malformations. Dr. Peter Shear will be operating on Tanya. Here, this is a typical ear tag that we see in hemifacial microsomia. She has no external auditory canal. She has no ear. He studied her case and has plans for a series of surgeries to build her a new jaw. It's a dream come true for Tanya and her family. And tomorrow night, we'll take you inside the operating room. You'll see Tanya get her first surgery in preparation for other surgeries she'll soon receive here in the Coachella Valley. Also, we'll show you the miracle outcome for the woman whose face was disfigured and sunken in after a stroke and fall 20 years ago. You won't believe what she looks like now after surgery. That's tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. Nine-year-old Tanya Rigolato Sanchez was born with what's called a hemifacial microsomia, a genetic birth defect. She has no jaw and no inner ear canal. This is a typical ear tag that we see in hemifacial microsomia. These bumps on the side of her face are parts of her earlobe that never formed correctly. Doctors in the past have seen Tanya, but their surgeries did not work. This year, the International Medical Alliance worked with the Ecuadorian government to allow Tanya to come to the United States for three months to get the medical help she needs to live a normal life. Dr. Peter Shear will operate on Tanya. He'll take a graft of her rib to recreate her jaw. 
We caught up with Tanya waiting in the hall of the St. Vincent de Paul Hospital in Ibarra, Ecuador, where this year's mission trip took place and asked her about coming to the United States with us. Sí, me siento muy bien porque yo sé que voy a regresar más bonita. The trip is Tanya's first time on an airplane and away from home. Her older sister will travel with her. Tanya has friends in school, but she lives a sheltered life because of her facial deformity. She hopes these surgeries will help her in her future. In, in, the, in the school, no. But when he's walking in the street, uh, when people look in here, she's um, como que... Uh, como que le, le mole, o sea, como que se siente un poquito... Um, this trip, Tanya will undergo an operation to take out some screws in her mouth placed there by doctors in the past. She's nervous, but she tries to be brave as she prepares for surgery, tightly holding on to this stuffed bunny the staff gave her. Let's go. Moving some old fixation screws that were placed about a year ago by a team that wanted to do this reconstruction. And the, uh, the area got infected, so the graft failed. And, uh, taking off the, the little screws, they're actually fairly big screws. Dr. Shear says it'll be an easy surgery for him, but Dr. Doriana Cosgrove says giving anesthesia to Tanya is tricky. As from the anesthesia standpoint, she's a really bad airway. Um, we can, when she cannot open her mouth, and we cannot see the vocal cords uh, to put a breathing tube in. Uh, which for an anesthesiologist is a nightmare. All goes well, and 30 minutes later, the screws are gone. Tanya wakes up and is taken into the recovery room. <coughs> it's heartbreaking to see her cry as the anesthesia wears off and the pain sets in. But she's in good hands, and the next day she's ready to go home for a few days before her big trip to the U.S. More room. Does it, does it hurt? No. <laughs> Take care. Ciao. Bye. <laughs> the doctors also performed a successful surgery on this woman. She had a stroke and seizure 20 years ago. She fell and fractured her face and was never able to afford medical care. The bacteria from fractured sinuses then ate away at her bone and muscle on this side of her face. Dr. Peter Shear says he can help her. He took fat from her stomach area and in surgery used that to rebuild her face. The next day, she looks like a completely different person. Come with us. So how does it look, Dr. Shear? Mm -hmm. It's awesome. Mm -hmm. Looking mm -hmm. Amazing how complete symmetry of the face. So you, it's, it's, I'm really happy. You almost wouldn't recognize her. Mm -mm. You wouldn't. Uh, well, with this morning when James walked in, I didn't. Couldn't, couldn't, couldn't find her. Has she looked in a mirror? Elizabeth Bobian, News Channel 3.